Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. We will now take uh, the same example that we have been taking for all the other meta heuristic techniques, the spear function. The, so, we will take the spear function with 4 decision variables, right. So, the spear function if you remember it is the summation of square of all the decision variables. So, the first step is to fix the swam size, the number of cycles and the parameter limit, right. So, the number of swam size will tell us the number of food sources, number of employed bees and the number of onlooker bees, right. The number of cycles will tell us when to complete our procedure and the parameter limit helps in determining as to when the scout phase is to be implemented. So, the limit parameter we should have ideally taken it as to be NP into D, right. So, NP in this case will be S by 2 which is 10 by 2. So, NP should have been taken as 5 and the number of decision variable is 4. Right. So, we are working with this 4 variable uh, problem. So, it should have been taken to be 20, but if we had taken the limit to be 20, uh, we would have had to perform a large number of iterations in order to encounter the scout phase. But since motivation here is to show all the phases, we have taken a very small value of a limit, right? limit equal to uh, 1. So, the next step is to determine the number of employed bees, onlooker bees and food sources. So, as we just discussed, it is um, S by 2, right. So, 10 by 2, the number of food sources is 5. The next step is to generate a random population, right. So, these are our food sources. So, we have 5 food sources, uh, food source 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and these are their corresponding objective function values, right. So, these values are obtained by plugging these solutions into the objective function x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus x4 square. The next step is to calculate the fitness of the population. Remember that in the other meta heuristic techniques which we had discussed, the objective function was the fitness function value, whereas here the fitness function is to be determined using this particular formula that fitness is equal to 1 by 1 plus f if the objective function is greater than or equal to 0 or it is 1 plus absolute of f if the objective function is less than 0. So, now we need to calculate the fitness of all the solutions, right. So, if we calculate the fitness of all the solutions, this is what we would be getting, right. So, now we have the initial food source or the initial population, we know their objective function values and we also know their fitness function values. So, the next step is to uh, generate the initial trial vector, right. So, initial trial vector, so the number of elements in the trial vector is equal to the uh, population size or the number of food sources. So, here we have 5 entries over here. Uh, so, each entry will correspond to the number of failures encountered by that particular solution. So, if the solution 4018 fails in any of the phases, we will have to increase the value of the trial by 1 for this first variable. Right. If this particular food source fails to generate a new solution, 1, 2, 8, 3, we will have to increase this particular counter. Right. Right. So, now we have the trial vector, we have the food source, we have calculated the objective function value and we also know the fitness function value. Right. So, the next step is to perform the employed B phase. So, in the employed B phase, uh, if you remember, all the food source get an opportunity to generate a new solution. So, every solution has to undergo the employed B phase. So, first in this case, the first solution is entering the employed B phase. So, that is 4018, right. So, in the employed B phase, we need to generate a new solution. So, to generate a new solution, we need a partner solution and which is to be randomly selected from the population and we also need to uh, randomly select a decision variable which we are going to change. Remember, in ABC algorithm, we are not changing all the decision variables, but we would be changing only one of the uh, D decision variables. So, even if there are 100 decision variables, only one variable is to be changed. So, in this case, let us take 
uh, the variable which we are going to change is the third variable, right? So, in this 4018, we are going to change this one 40 and 8 that is the first decision variable x1, x2, and x4 will remain the same, only x3 will get modified, right? So, now we have randomly selected the variable to be changed, now we will randomly select the partner to be changed. So, in this case let us assume that we are selecting the fourth partner. So, this is the first food source, the second food source, the third food source and this is the fourth food source. So, 2149 is the fourth food source. So, here also we are going to select the only the third variable because that is what we have decided that we will randomly change the variable 3. Now that we have the random partner, we have the random variable to be changed, we will require this phi value. Remember phi has randomly taken between minus 1 and 1. So, if we take 0 0.81, if we plug into this equation, so x j is 1 that is from the current solution, right? 0 0.81 is the uh, phi value which we have chosen, 1 is again from the current solution, this 4 is from the partner solution, right? So, if we evaluate, we will end up with this minus 1.43. So, the first solution is undergoing the employed B phase, right? So, we get 40 minus 1.43 and 8. So, the next step is to check for the bounds of the decision variable, right? So, I do not need to check the bounds of these decision variables because they are the same. We, we have modified only x3. So, we need to check the bounds of only x3 over here, right? It is minus 1.43 and for this problem, the bounds were to be between 0 and 10. So, the lower bound is 0. So, now if we see this solution actually violates the lower bound. So, we need to bound that solution. So, we take the maximum of minus 1.43 and the lower bound which is 0. So, if we take that, we will get a 0. So, the new solution is 4008, right? The solution which generated 4008 is 4018, right? So, as we see this solution is only slightly away from the solution 4018 because we had changed only one decision variable, right? So, now we have this solution. The next step is to calculate its objective function value. So, the objective function value as you know, it is the sum of square of all the uh, decision variables. So, that will turn out to be 80 in this case and then we need to calculate the fitness because in ABC we work with the fitness of the solution and not the objective function. The fitness is nevertheless calculated using the objective function, right? So, the fitness value is 0 0.0123 for this solution, right? Now, we need to perform a greedy selection, right? So, we will perform a greedy selection that is the solution which was used to generate is the first solution and the solution which we have generated is this x1 new. So, among these two solutions, we are supposed to select one of the solution, right? So, we will do that on the basis of the fitness function value. So, the fitness function value if we see that for the newly generated solution, it is better than the solution which was used to generate. So, this 0 0.0123 is greater than 0 0.0122, right? So, what we will do is we will eliminate the first solution right and we will include the new solution, right? So, when we say eliminate the solution, so we should not only eliminate the decision variables, but the objective function, the fitness as well as the trial counter, right? Because this is a new solution which is coming into the population, uh, the new solution is updated, right? The objective function value is updated. So, the objective function value of the new solution is 80, uh, the fitness of the new solution is updated and the trial is to be reset to 0. Right? Since it is the first iteration, we may not be able to realize this particular step, right? but uh, had it this been any other value, this had to be reset to 0 because a new solution is actually entering our population. Right? So, that completes uh, the employed B phase for the first solution. So, now we are supposed to perform the employed B phase for the second solution. So, the second solution F2 is 3197. Right? Let us take the random partner to be 3. Right? Let the random variable is 1 and the randomly selected partner is 3. Uh, so, based on these two solutions, we are again going to generate a, a new solution. So, again for this equation, we require phi between minus 1 and 1. So, if we take phi value to be 0 0.19, so this 3 plus 0 0.19 into 3 minus 0 based on this equation will give us a value of 3.57. Right? So, the new solution is actually 3.5719 and 7. In this case, it happens that the solution is already bounded, right? Our bounds were 0 to 10. So, this is within the bounds of uh, lower and upper bound of 0 to 10. 
So then we need to calculate the objective function value. So in this case it comes out to be 143.74 and then we need to calculate the fitness using the formula that fitness is equal to 1 by 1 plus objective function value. So the fitness turns out to be 0 0.0069 in this case. Right. After this we have a new solution now, we have evaluated its objective function as well as the fitness. So now we are ready to perform a greedy selection. Right. So we will perform a greedy selection as in we will compare the solution which was used to generate the new solution that is this x2, uh, this solution and the newly generated solution. Right. So the newly generated solution is 3.57197. Right. So between these two if we see the new solution is actually having a poor fitness. Right. So this has a poor fitness this value is lower than this value. Remember fitness function is inversely related to the objective function. right? So this value is lower so we need to discard this solution. right? So since this solution is discarded 3197 failed to generate a better solution. So now we will increase the trial counter of the second solution by 1. Right. So here if you see we are increasing the trial counter only of the second solution. Right. We are not changing one or any of the other because it is this solution 3197 which failed to generate a good solution. So since that failed we are increasing the trial counter by one. This completes the employed B phase of the second solution. So remember the first solution helped us in generating a solution which was actually better. Right. So we took that inside the population. Whereas in the second solution it did not help us to create a better solution. right? So we discard that solution, we retain the same solution right? but increase the trial counter by 1. So similarly we need to perform the employed B phase for the rest of the solution. Since the procedure is similar we will not show the detailed uh, calculation. You can try it out yourself. Right. So variable if we select the variable to be changed randomly if you take the first variable and the partner solution also has to be the first partner. Right. So this is the partner 4008 is the partner solution and we are selecting the variable 1 and the third solution. So the equation is to be applied between 0 and 4. The rest of the three variables 315 will be retained. Right. Uh, if we generate the new solution uh, we need to check for its bound. If it is within the bounds well and good. If it is not within the bounds, we will have to bound it, evaluate its objective function, then we will have to evaluate its fitness function value and then we will have to perform a greedy search. Right? So depending upon the fitness, so you will have to perform a greedy selection and then update the population. So in this case, if you do all those things, uh, if we see that the solution 0315 is actually retained. So what does that mean? That means this new solution which was generated is actually inferior to this. right? Uh, so that is why it has not been incorporated into the population but it has been discarded. Since this third solution failed to generate a new solution, we increase the trial counter by 1. So here it was 0, so we here we increase the trial counter by 1. Right? Similarly you can perform for the fourth solution. Right. So for the fourth solution the variable that you should change is the second variable. Right. Fourth solution second variable is this one, this one and the partner selected is again 3. Right. So this one. So if you apply the equation the new variable would be 1 plus minus 0.6 into 1 minus 3. Right. So if you apply this equation you will be able to uh, calculate what is the second variable. So the new solution would be to whatever you are calculating over here and 4 and 9. Right? This solution you will have to check whether this variable is within bounds or not. So this will be x2 because we are changing the second variable and this is the new solution. You need to check the bound of this. If it is in the bounds we do not need to bound it but if it is not in the bound we need to bring it back into the bounds and then evaluate its objective function and the fitness function value. Once we have uh, evaluated the objective function and fitness function value, we will have to employ a greedy selection strategy and depending upon that we will have to either update the population or either update the trial counter. So in this case if you determine the new solution and fitness, you will be able to see that the solution is again the same. That means we encountered a failure and we have updated the trial counter. Similarly you have to perform it for the fifth solution. Right. Uh, the variable to be changed is fourth variable. So this is the variable to be changed. The partner solution is third. Right. So this one you need to apply that equation with a phi value of 0.81 and calculate the new variable. If the new variable is within the bounds good otherwise you will have to bound evaluate the objective function 
the fitness function value and then perform a greedy search, right. So, in this case, uh, if you see this fifth variable has been changed. So, that indicates that we had encountered a success, right. Since we had encountered a success, uh, this trial value has to be reset to 0. It happens that it is 0 over here already, but assume at some stage it was 5. And this 1283 actually led us to this solution 1281.38 1 which was actually better. Then this phi had to be reset to 0 because 1283 underwent employed B phase and was able to generate a better solution. And since the better solution is being incorporated in the population, we will have to uh, initialize the trial value to be 0, right. So, that completes the employed B phase. Uh, for all the phi solutions. So, here we have basically tried to generate phi new solution. If the solution was good, we include it in the population. If the solution was bad, we discarded it. One major difference between other algorithms and he over here is that whenever we encounter a failure, we keep track of the number of failures, right. So, that completes the employed B phase. Before going to the onlooker B phase, we need to evaluate the probability associated with each solution. So, this is our current population, right, and this is our current objective function value, and this is our current fitness value. To determine this probability equation, we are required to find out the maximum fitness. So, the maximum fitness is 0 0.0278. So, we can calculate the probability for each solution, right. So, uh, first solution will have 0 0.9 into 0 0.0123 divided by 0 0.0278 plus this 0.1. Right. So, we will end up with this probability values for all the 5 food sources, right. Now, we have the probability value, we can actually implement the onlooker B phase. So, the first onlooker B will decide whether it will go for the first food source or not, right. So, for that we need to generate a random number, right. Let the random number be 0.39. So, is this random number less than 0.5, right. So, the probability associated with the first food source is 0.5. So, that is why we are comparing this 0 0.39 with 0 0.5. And since this condition is valid, right, we enter the loop for creating a new solution. So, creating the new solution is the same procedure. It is the first solution that we need, we are considering as of now, first food source which is being considered, right. So, this 4008, we need to use that to generate a new solution. So, to generate a new solution, uh, we need to decide on the variable that we are going to change. So, let the variable be 4, again this is randomly selected. We need to decide on a partner. So, let the partner be uh, 3. So, again the partner is randomly selected. So, the third solution is 0315, the first solution is 4008 and we have decided to modify the fourth variable. So, 8 and 5. Now, we need to again employ this equation uh, with a particular phi value to generate the new solution. So, if we take a value of phi to be minus 0 0.68, we will uh, end up with this 5.96, right. So, uh, the first three variables x1, x2, x3 will remain the same because only one variable is changed in ABC. So, this is the new solution. This solution happens to be in the bounds, right. So, we can calculate its objective function, right. So, 51.52 is the objective function and then we need to calculate its fitness value. So, once we have calculated the objective function and the fitness value, we are ready to perform a greedy selection, right. So, the solution that is undergoing onlooker B phase is the first solution. This is the new solution which we have generated. So, we need to check this condition which is better. So, if we compare these two values, we can see that the new solution has a better fitness value 0 0.019 when compared to 0 0.0123. So, we are going to discard the first solution, right. So, we have replaced the solution. Uh, its corresponding objective function value, its fitness function value and the trial again uh, it has to be reset to 0. Immaterial of what is the value over here, it has to be reset to 0. Even if we had a value of 10 over here, in this case it had it should be replaced because we have generated a new solution which is better and that has entered the population, right. So, this particular member has not got a chance to generate new solutions so far. So, its trial has to be set to 0. So, that is the onlooker B phase of the first B. Right? Now, we need to go for the second B. So, now we will have to uh, select the second food source. Right? So, again we need to generate a random number, let the random number be 0.2. We need to check this condition, right? the probability of the second food source is 0.33. So, this condition is satisfied. Right? So, again we need to employ the same procedure. We will not give the detailed calculation here, but you can uh, perform that let the variable to be changed be 3 and the partner be 5, right. So, the third variable 
and fifth is the partner. So, right now the second solution and the variable which we are talking is the third variable, right. So, this, this 9 and this 8, right, both of them have to be used to generate a new solution. So, once you generate a new solution, you will have to check for its bounds. If it is in the bound, uh, it is ok, we do not need to bound it, else we will have to use the corner bounding strategy. Then we will have to evaluate the objective function and the fitness function value, right. Uh, once we have the fitness function value, we'll, we are supposed to perform a greedy selection. So, if you do the calculation, you will see that you will end up with this value 8.68, right? And it happens that this newly generated solution is better than 3197. So, this solution is to be eliminated and the new solution is to be included, right? Whenever a new solution is included in the population, its trial has to be set to 0. So, both the first B and the second B. Uh, gave us a new solution which is actually better, right. So, for the second solution if you see the trial was initially 1, right, now it is being set to 0 because we have replaced that particular solution, right. So, this completes the onlooker B phase of the second solution, right. So, for the third solution if we perform, so now the first food source has been exploited, the second food source has been exploited. So now we need to consider the third food source, right. Third food source has a probability of 1, right. So for the third onlooker B, whether it will use the third food source or not depends upon a random number which is to be generated between 0 and 1. So if the random number let us say it is 0.57, right, in this case it will satisfy uh, this condition, right. Uh, if it satisfies this condition, we need to generate a new solution. So, let us assume that the second variable will be changed with the help of the fourth solution. So, right now second variable, so this 3 and this partner is fourth. So, we can generate a new solution and then we have to check for its bounds. Uh, if it is in the bounds, uh, well and good, otherwise we will have to bound it. Then we need to evaluate the objective function and the fitness function value. Once we have evaluated the objective function value and the fitness function value, we can perform a greedy selection. So, in this case uh, it happens that the solution that is generated is not better. That is why if, if we perform a greedy selection, uh, we will see that this solution 0315 is actually being retained, which indicates that the solution which we generated actually was inferior to this. So, in that case what we do is we increase the trial by 1. So, trial all, it is already 1 over here when we started, right. So, now it encountered a failure. So, we are increasing the trial from 1 to 2, right. So, this completes the onlooker B phase for the third B, right. So, for all these three cases if you see this condition was valid that whatever random number we chose was less than the probability value, right. And whenever we generated a new solution we reset the trial counter to 0 and when we do not get a better solution we increase the trial counter by 1, right. So, that is what has uh, happened. So, we have exploited all these three food sources, right. So, now we need to go to the fourth food source, right. Let the random number be 0.95. Since we are working with the fourth food source, right, this 0.95 has to be compared with this 0.41, right. So, this condition does not satisfy. For the first three Bs, this condition was satisfied and hence we generated a new solution. In this case, this condition is not satisfied. So, we will not be able to generate a new solution. So, no new solution is to be generated using this food source, right. So, remember the fourth B which is now undergoing uh, this onlooker B phase did not get an opportunity to generate a new solution. I should neither reset it to 0 nor I should increase it by 1, right. We will increase it by 1 only when it has generated a solution and it, it has met a failure. We will reset it to 0 if the new solution is actually better, right. In this case 2149 was not even able to generate a solution. So, we should not update the trial vector, right. We should neither update increase it by 1 nor reset it to 0. Right? So, now this 4 food sources have been exploited, right and fourth onlooker B has not completed the onlooker B phase. So, what we will have to do is the fourth B will now undergo the fifth source because the first 4 food sources have been exploited, right. So, we again generate a random number, let us say it is 0 0.54, here we need to again check. Right. So, this should be actually 0 0.54, not 0 0.3, it has to be 0 0.54 because that is the random number that we have generated. So, this 0 0.54 has to be compared with 0 0.55, right. So, since the condition is satisfied, we need to generate a new solution. For generating a new solution, we need to decide on a partner, we need to decide on the variable that has to be changed. In order to perform the calculations, you can take the variable to be changed as 1, 
and the random partner as 2 and a phi value of 0 0.7. Right? So, if you take that you will be able to generate a new solution, right? bound that solution if it is out of bounds, evaluate the objective function, evaluate the fitness function value, apply a greedy selection over there and if it is better update. So, in this case if you see the fifth food source, right? remember it is the fourth onlooker B but it is the fifth food source that uh, we have selected because only for the fifth food source that condition was satisfied. For the fourth food source it was not there. So, now we are uh, working with 128, 1 1.38 and not 2149 because the food source we have selected is phi. Right? So, now if you see that solution has been updated, right? Uh, we had got a better solution over there. So, we have uh, updated the solution and the trial counter since it is a new solution which is entering the population, the trial counter is set to 0. So, now if you observe all the 5 food sources have been exploited. However, only 4 B's have underwent the onlooker B phase. right? So, for the 5th B, we need to start from the first food source. So, the food source to be selected is 1. Now, we will have to decide whether the 5th B will exploit food source 1. right? So, food source 1 again we are working with this solution. right? So, for that we need to again generate a random number, let the random number be 0 0.41, right. So, if the random number is 0 0.41, this condition satisfies that 0 0.41 is less than 0 0.5. Uh, so, we need to generate a new solution. For generating a new solution, we need a variable that has to be changed and a partner that has to be used to change it, right. So, if we select the first variable and the second solution as partner with a phi value of minus 0.87. If you perform the calculation, you will see that you are you will be generating a solution which is actually better than this solution. right? So, since it is better than that solution, this solution is discarded and the solution is included. right? So, since we are changing only one variable, only this x1 has changed. So, this completes uh, the onlooker B phase. Remember the difference between the employed B phase and the onlooker B phase. In the employed B phase, all the food sources were used to generate a uh, new solution. Whereas, in onlooker B phase, a uh, food source may or may not generate a new solution. That depends on the uh, random number which is selected for a particular onlooker B as well as the probability of the food source. In this example, the fourth food source was never used to generate a new solution. right? Now that we have completed the employed B phase and the onlooker B phase, now we need to implement the scout phase. Remember, scout phase may or may not be encountered in every iteration. right? So, first we need to check whether we need to perform scout phase or not. So, that decision is taken on the basis of trial vector. right? So, if we see this is our trial vector and if you remember the limit that we started was 1 right? and this trial vector has a value of 2. So, this particular solution 0, 3, 1, 5 got an opportunity to generate 2 solutions. Right? And in both the cases, it failed to generate a solution better than itself. Right? So, in this case, what we will do is, we will have to discard this solution from the population and replace it by a randomly generated solution. In employed B phase and in onlooker B phase, we use two solutions to generate a particular new solution. Whereas, in scout B phase, the entire solution has to be discarded and a randomly generated new solution has to be included. Right? So, solution which will be discarded in this case is this one uh, because it has a trial value of 2, the third solution has a trial value of 2. So, we need to generate a random solution. So, let the random solution be, be uh, this one. So, this random solution is again generated bit by using x is equal to lb plus ub minus lb into random number. right? So, remember all the variables have to be changed. In employed B phase and in the onlooker B phase, we were changing the value of only one decision variable, whereas here this entire solution is to be discarded 0, 3, 1, 5, all the four values are to be discarded and replaced with randomly generated values. right? So, let us say I generated this value and let us say the objective function value of this is 293.33. So, now if you compare the objective function value of this solution and of this solution which we have decided to discard, the solution which we are discarding has a better objective function value. right? Despite that fact, we will still discard this solution. That is the difference in uh, scout B phase. In employed B phase as well as in onlooker B phase, we did employ a greedy selection strategy. right? Over here, there is no selection strategy. 
So, a solution has to be discarded, which solution will be discarded depends upon the trial value of that particular solution and irrespective of the value of the objective function, the new solution is included in the population. Right? So, that is a fundamental difference between scout B phase and employed B phase and onlooker B phase. Right? So, our new solution would be this one. So, this solution is removed and this one is there. So, now if you compare this population, we did encounter a solution of 35, right? but since we updated it, it is lost and all of these solutions are actually bad than the solution which we have discarded. Right? So, this can happen in scout B phase. In scout B phase, a solution which is very good can get discarded. Right? To avoid this, what we will do is, we will store the solution before discarding. Right? So, these values are stored, the solution, its fitness function and the objective function value are stored separately and it is discarded. Next time when I am discarding a solution, let us say we progress and then uh, in subsequent iteration again I am going to discard a solution in scout B phase. So, that time I will compare that solution with this solution. Right? So, if this solution still remains the better solution, I will not update these values, but if it happens that the other solution is better than this solution, then we will update this. So, basically what we are saying is that when before entering into the scout phase, you will have to check if the solution that is going to be discarded is actually the best solution that you have encountered so far. If that is the case, store the solution separately, uh, though it may not be present in the population, it is to be stored separately. Right? So, that completes the scout B phase of the first iteration. Right? With the same settings, if you continue to perform 10 iterations or 10 cycles, right, the solution that we end up is given over here. These are the value of the food sources at the end of 10 cycles or 10 iterations. So, the best value obtained is 20.34. Right? This is the least value in terms of objective function. If you compare in, the, in terms of fitness function, this will have the highest value because objective function as well as uh, fitness function are inversely related in ABC algorithm. Right. So, here if we see that the best value we obtain at the end of 10 iterations is 20.34. Right. So, with a swarm size of 10 right, and with 10 cycles with a limit of 1, this is the optimal solution as determined by ABC algorithm. The inventor of ABC has a home page for the ABC algorithm. On the home page of ABC, you will be able to find MATLAB codes, C codes, Java codes, uh, C sharp code, uh, R code is also available over here. Right? So, R code is available over here for ABC implementation. Uh, they have also provided these two software right, to understand the working of ABC. Right? So, let us have a quick look at those two softwares. Right? Uh, so, this is the first one wherein the number of variables are restricted. So, it is just a two dimensional problem. So, this value is locked, number of parameters is 2. So, the colony size we can fix, right? the colony size is nothing but the swam size which is twice the number of food sources. Right? The parameter range we can fix, the upper and lower bounds of the two decision variables can be fixed with these two values. The number of cycles that we want to implement in ABC can be set over here. We can also change the limit, right? so the limit parameter can be given over here. Over here there are few functions which are given, uh, I think so there are four functions in this software. Right? So, this shows the surface plot of this Grivank function, right? so the variation of objective function with respect to the decision variable. This is the surface plot and they also have a contour plot for this problem. Right? So, as x1 and x2 vary, how do the contours look can be seen over here. And here the global optima for this problem is given, it is a two variable problem. So, the global optima is x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 0 and the, the objective at x1 equal to 0, x2 equal to 0 is 0. This uh, portion indicates the solution that has been obtained by ABC. This one shows uh, the search space. right? So, for example, the decision variable, the lower and upper bound for the decision variable were minus 600 and 600. So, this is minus 600, this is plus 600, right? same thing for the other variable. So, this shows the location of the food source. right? So, with various color they indicate what is the global optima, what is the best solution that has been obtained by ABC so far. Uh, whenever a scout is encountered, it is plotted with a green color. right? So, this shows the movement of 
the food sources during the search process. So, for every cycle, we will be able to see how, how the food sources are uh, moving. This plot shows uh, the cycles on the x axis and the fitness function on the y axis, right. So, the line on the top shows the best fitness. So, in that cycle, what is the best fitness that has been achieved so far, right. So, that is shown over here and the second line shows the average of the fitness at that particular cycle, right. And this marks show scout has been discovered in that particular cycle, right. When we execute this program for 15 cycles, three times the scout phase was encountered, right. So, this 20, the limit of 20 was hit thrice. Uh, remember, since the colony size is uh, high, right, the colony size is 100. So, the number of food sources uh, 50. So, they are working with 50 solutions uh, and the limit is set as 20, right. So, there are solutions which hit the uh, limit value, right. So, for 20 times a particular solution is not able to improve itself. So, in that case, that solution enters the scout phase and it is eliminated, right. So, with this, we can understand the working of ABC better. Let us have a look at the software. So, the number of variables cannot be changed because they are plotting contour plot and mesh surface, right. So, if I select, they have four functions over here, the spear function, Rosenberg function, Rastringent function and the function. Let us select the Rastringent function. Right. So, this shows the surface plot and this shows the contour plot of it. Here the decision variables are between minus 5.12 to 5.12, right. So, let us just perform 15 cycles. So, let us see how it works. So, if I give run ABC, so let me just move this over here. If I click on OK, it will show me the positions of bees in the first cycle, right. So, these are the positions of the position of the bees in the first cycle, right. So, this is the global optimal solution. Uh, so, right now if we see the solutions are pretty much they are scattered everywhere. So, if I click on OK, this is the positions at the second cycle, right, at the end of second cycle, po positions at the end of third cycle at the end of fourth cycle. So, as we see the solutions are slowly uh, moving towards uh, the global optima, right. Uh, let us see if we encounter a scout, yes. So, in this cycle a scout was encountered, right. So, that will come up in this plot also, right. Uh, we can actually see in what was the cycle number in which the scout phase was encountered, right. So, if I keep uh, doing this. Right. So, uh, as you see, the solutions are slowly uh, moving at the end of 20 cycles. This is what we have, right. So, this shows the average fitness value. So, it is close to 1, the average fitness is close to 1. Remember, this is not the objective function value. The objective function is inversely related to this. This is the average fitness of the population. So, the scout phase was encountered uh, th three times. Uh, at probably uh, the 11th cycle and the 13th cycle and the 14th cycle. So, the scout phase was encountered three times. We can similarly perform for any other uh, problem, right. So, for Grivank, let us say this is unlocked and then if we run it. So, let us say how it happens for the Grivank function, right. So, whether it is able to converge. So, the solutions seem to be moving towards this thing. So, if you increase the number of cycles, right, so you will be able to see that these solutions are actually converging to you know, the optimal solution. This software helps us to visualize the uh, movement of the solutions, right. It also has uh, this another software, right, wherein uh, the number of decision variables are not fixed, right. So, here it was fixed to just two variable, here we can change the number of variable and here we can run for multiple runs, right. We need not restrict to one run, we can run for multiple runs, right. So, this is again the desired global optima. This is the solution that is reported as the optimal solution by ABC algorithm, right. So, the x axis in this figure is cycles. So, how does the fitness function vary with respect to uh, the cycles and this one shows the average fitness. Since we are uh, implementing multiple runs, uh, in each run the best fitness function value is different. So, in each cycle across all the runs, the mean of the fitness function values are taken and that is what is plotted over here, right. So, here also the x axis is cycles. So, let us have a look at this particular software. So, here we can change the number of decision variables. Let us take the Rosenberg function. 
and the let the number of decision variables be 50. So, Rosenberg function is a scalable function, right. So, let us keep the number of runs to just 5, right. So, you can perform it uh, with larger number of runs, right. So, let me for demonstration purpose, let me just take 5 runs and let me just execute this ABC. Right. So, it will take a little bit of time. So, it reports the 50 decision variable and the objective function value obtained at each run. So, here if we see that uh, the values of all the 5 runs are given. Right. So, in the fourth run it obtained an objective function value of 3.69. In the last run it obtained an objective function value of 0 0.31 with these as the decision variable. Right. So, the optimal solution for this function occurs at all the 50 decision variables taking a value of 1. Right. However, uh, here if we see some of the variables, so for example, variable 50 is 2.22, 49 is 1.48. So, in each run we had obtained the objective function value, the mean of this is given over here right? and this is the standard deviation across the 5 runs. Right? The y axis over here is the objective function value whereas the x axis cycles, over here the x axis is cycles in this plot and the y axis is a fitness. So, that is why it is inversely related, the fitness is actually increasing whereas the objective function is actually decreasing. One thing that you need to notice, we had calculated the probability using this equation. right? So, if we have NP members, the fitness of the ith member divided by the maximum fitness into this 0.9 plus 0.1. Right? This expression we have actually obtained from the MATLAB code which has been given over here by the authors themselves. Right? But if you actually look into the paper of artificial bee colony optimization, this is how probability is calculated. So, it is fitness of i divided by summation of fitness of all of the members. Right? So, if we have let us assume the fitness to be 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, let us say 0 0.2 over here. Right. So, this is the fitness of 4 members, let us say we have 4 members and this is the fitness. Right. So, this denominator is nothing but summation of this 4 values. Right. So, for first member it will be 0 0.1 divided by whatever summation. So, let us assume the summation to be x. So, for the first member the probability is 0 0.1 by x, for the second member it is 0 0.8 by x, for the third member it is 0 0.9 by x and for the fourth member it is 0 0.2 by x. So, this is how probability is to be calculated as per the paper. right? So, over here this is the expression. That expression we have just changed it into our notation. There they use Sn, but since we are looking at multiple algorithms we thought that we would stick with a consistent notation. So, that is why we have used NP. Right? So, this we have demonstrated to you how to calculate. Right? So, this is a minor difference between what we are using and what has been reported in the paper. Right? But even in the code of the authors this is what is used. Right? So, probability equal to 0 0.9 into fitness divided by maximum fitness plus 0 0.1. Right? So, if you go back and read the paper, you will find this discrepancy, but this discrepancy is because inherently there is discrepancy between what the author has reported in the paper and what they have used in their code. Right? So, if you want to use this, you can use this, everything else remains the same, it is just the way that we calculate probability is different. So, if you are interested in further reading on artificial bee colony optimization, right, you can look into this technical report. So, there they explain in much greater detail, uh, particularly the motivation of uh, artificial bee colony optimization. So, this is the paper in which ABC was first reported, it is in the Journal of Global Optimization. Right. Again, uh, I would strongly recommend you to look into this paper. Right. So, artificial bee colony optimization. Uh, came up in let us say in 2007, right? 8 years down the line they had to publish another paper just to show that many of the researchers who have been using artificial bee colony optimization between 2007 and uh, 2015, not all of them were implementing the original ABC uh, as proposed by their inventors. Uh, when you use these algorithms, now that we have seen the phi algorithms, when you use these algorithms, you need to be extremely careful, right? particularly if you are comparing multiple algorithms, then you need to be very careful that the termination criteria is identical for all the algorithms. right? So, the number of iterations cannot be a, a termination criteria. So, as we have seen previously, given a specified number of iterations, different algorithms uh, consume different number of functional evaluations. right? So, you can look into this paper. Right. So, recently there was a review of artificial bee colony optimization and particularly their applications to data clustering. Right. So, you can look into that review paper also. 
if you are interested in multi objective artificial bee colony optimization you can look into this paper um, which appeared in the journal swam and evolutionary computation right so with that uh, we'll conclude this session of artificial bee colony optimization in the next session we'll look at the implementation of artificial bee colony optimization using matlab thank you